Christ, allow me to greet you all in the wonderful and profound name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Bishop. Merry Christmas to all of you. May you have a lovely and a blessed day. Unfortunately, this morning, the guy again cannot be with me worshiping with us this morning. We are busy moving from 16 Sahita Street back to 16 Love Street. So I don't know whether the Methodist in uh, Namibia, uh, whether they are trying to give me a message with the 16s. Uh, we were 16 Love Street, then we went to 16 Albert Cross, then to 16 Sahita. <laughs> now we are back to 16 again, Love Street. Loved ones, so we are busy moving. We are actively busy, so we will not be able to celebrate Christmas this morning because we have to be in the new Ukraine. Let us be united. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, to whom all hearts are open of desires and our hearts. From whom no secrets are there. There is the thoughts of our hearts by inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you. Make me fly your name. We come before you, Lord God, in the greatest sense of our heart. We adore you, we love you. For you loved us first. We come before you, Heavenly Father, on this day of Christmas. And we pray, Father God, that as we celebrate, the birth of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who is also you. For it is him who said in John chapter 14, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, for I and my Father we are one. And so we come before you, Lord God, and we pray that you would renew us, that we would also celebrate a new birth within everyone. So we come before you, Lord God, we pray that you would speak to us this morning. Give us words, Lord God, that will transform and change our lives, so that what we do will be accepted in your sight. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God, my Redeemer and my King. Amen. <laughs> my loved ones in Christ, this time of the year, I, I'm, 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 I'm not getting used to the quietness of the service. The service is very quiet. Uh, as you know, that I'm a very loud person. And uh, some people know that I must be taken with a little bit of salt. So, uh, let's start this service this way with the sermon. Thank you, Simeon. You are my singer. You know that. <laughs> In this time of the year, the as the schools, especially the primary and all the lower grades, come to the end of the year. Thank you very much. You are the only mother among all these women. <laughs> <laughs> this time of the year, the the schools as they draw to a conclusion, they would always prepare a nativity play. And uh, in the grade 7 class, there was a young boy by the name of Bertie, bigger than the others, but unfortunately, Bertie had a learning disorder. So, Bertie's family were very stressed. They are usually very stressed when it comes to this time of the year because all the other kids will get the roles that they would play and also what they would say at the concert and, 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 and mom was so scared that Bertie might get something that he won't be able to do. And so to a surprise, Bertie came home with his list, with the dress code, what he needs to wear on that day and she looked at the, the, of the list that Bertie had and what it said and it only said no room. And to a relief, she invited her and Betty's grandparents and, and friends to the nativity play. Come and see my son, he's, 
He is the act, he's going to act at the negativity play. So Bertie playing the, the innkeeper stood behind the table on the day felt or being observed by a hall filled with people excited to see their kids performing on the stage. And so the actors that played Mary and Joseph came knocking on Bertie's door, entering the inn, asking for Bertie whether there is any space. And lo and behold, Bertie forgot to respond. The guy playing Joseph looked at Bertie and heard that someone calling from behind the curtains, no room, no room, looked at Bertie and unfortunately Bertie could not catch it. And something told him just to turn around and to move away from the table as if he is walking away in disappointment. And then Bertie spoke and said, there is no room, no room at the inn, but you can have my bed at home. <laughs> this morning, my love was in Christ. We find ourselves on this lovely day called Christmas Day. But the Gospel of Luke introduces us into this day into, in a very strange way. Luke's Gospel tells us, my beloved in Christ, that the decree was made that everyone in, in, in the, under the Roman occupation cities or states or countries here to move to their birthplace to be registered. Among them, my loved ones in Christ, as people were moving up to be registered wherever Joseph who was a descendant of King David, also left home with his betrothed Mary, who was pregnant. As they Moved. The Bible does not say, by the commentary, Luke's commentary says directly that they had to travel 80 kilometers. And in the time of traveling, my love was in the time of Joseph and Mary, there were no cars, there were no planes, there were no bicycles. So they had to travel by donkey. And it took them a whole week to move to Bethlehem. Only to come into Bethlehem and being disappointed, looking for a place to stay, knocking against the doors of the inns, asking whether they could accommodate them, and every time they heard the words, no. Joseph took Mary. And the only place where they could find the place to, to just to be sheltered from the elements was in the stall where animals were kept. And in that lonely place, in that place of filth, in that place where people who, who, who look at themselves as being meaning something in society would not want to be associated with, but it is in that place that Mary brought Christ. In that place, my loved ones, laying him down in a trough. A trough, my loved ones, is a place or the bowl from which the animals are eating from or have to eat from. And that was the only place where Mary could put down her beloved, the light of the world, being born. There's no room. No room for the Son of Man, no room for the light of the world. Luke says these words, for the light came to the world, but because the world loved darkness, they abandoned the light. This morning, my dear in Christ, as we come to celebrate Christmas, the question that we have to ask this morning, is there room for Christ in you? 
When we look at the societies and communities in which we are staying, we speak about God left, right and center. Even in the past, my loved ones, I'm talking about the past. Even in the past, my loved ones, we used to base our community values on spiritual things being supported by the Bible and in our communities. When you look at how our kids are now accommodated at school, that the, the, I don't want to say the government because we are the government, we are part of the government, that we in my loved ones in Christ have taken out the Bible from schools and when we took out the Bible and threw it through the window, we also threw discipline through the window because in my time and in some of your times, never have you heard of a child getting up in a class and hitting a teacher within the class, attacking school kids within the class because we don't have room in our communities. Oh, for Jesus. Secondly, you may have room in our church for Jesus. The church should be a place of love. The church should be a place of comfort. When someone gets hurt outside, then this person should come into the church. And here in this place, it is where we are supposed to open up our arms to receive and to hold others, to whisper into your ear, you are not alone in this situation, but yet the church has become a political hub. There's no room. Isaiah says that the church should not forget its prophetic voice. When Isaiah speaks, he speaks in the tyranny of Roman occupation. He speaks in a time when the Israelites were waiting and praying for liberation and yet they were looking at political liberation and not at the spiritual revelation. <coughs> Isaiah says, For unto you a child is born, and all be so on his shoulders he will have his government. And he would be called, he would be called what? You will become what? Uh huh. And? And? Prince of Peace. And? Our problem in our church is that we have lost our prophetic voice. We want to preach sermons that will comfort the hearts of people. Because you don't want to upset people. Because you don't know whom you are going to call when the stipend do not come in. So you are talking around the issues. Even when you know that people are at the wrong, you stroke them down, you comfort them with prosperity gospels. And yet we forget, my loved ones in Christ, that at times that God has appointed us to be a prophet, to speak even in difficult times, and even in times when others do not see that we are still on to disaster, to tell the world that says the Lord. Amen. This time we must move away. Move away from maintenance. Because our theology has become a maintenance theology. We speak about the assessments, we speak about the pledges. Those things are important, but what about the souls of people? Is there room? Is there room for Christ in the church? The lady, the man, in a place where others do not want to go. It reminds me of a thought that somebody shared with me long ago. Somebody said, if Jesus or if God was willing to be born or to send his son to be born in the manger in a ditty place. 
To what length will God go to save you? It doesn't matter how dirty that place may be. It doesn't matter whether it is a place where, where others do not want to be. But when God wants to save us, He will go to the extent of reaching out in the darkest places. For He loves us first. Is there room for us? Is there room for God? In our lives, in our homes, in our families, we have taken our God out of our houses. We don't have spiritual conversations with our children anymore. And then we are surprised if our children do not grow spiritually. Okay. When When you see other children worshiping the Lord, knowing the Lord, praying, you ask your kids, why can't you be like? And the reality is that the problem does not lie with your children, but the problem lies with you as a parent. That you have never brought this child up in spiritual ways because you are busy with your outside activities. You are busy watching Stephen the Lance and Foster and others play. Spending hours and hours in front of the television and not once taking the Bible so that your children may learn from your example. Is there room for Christ in your house? When last, if you call your family together, and said to them, let us pray. When asked, if you ask your kids, what is your most favorite scripture in the Bible? And what does it say? Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, is he. So whatever you do, as you think in your heart, so shall you be. You shall be saving the life. You shall be St. Foster. You shall be your tennis, your soccer, your rugby. But the question is, where will you spend eternity? First Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. Do you not know that you are the, your body is the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. And that's what you are. Mm. That was in Christ. As I draw to a conclusion, just an interesting fact. According to a study, in the year last year, 2021, by Bama Research Group, they said, the Baba Research Group says, only 60%, 60% of born again Christians attend church. The funeral of the Queen, I was surprised for them to say that Christianity is a minority faith in the UK. Where we Methodists originate from. Christianity is a minority faith. The reason why Christianity has become a minority faith is that people have been looking are from outside within. They have been looking at the way in which we work with one another, in which we work with each other, in which we treat one another. And people say, if Christians are like that, I am better off. Gandhi once said, I love Christianity, but I hate Christians. We have taken Christ out of our lives. We have changed that which, has, which was supposed to levitate us and push us into the darkness of the world to bring light in those darknesses. 
who had taken Christ out and have replaced him with the law. I want to conclude, my dear brother. It gets very serious, man. Hey, I can see you, man. On Christmas Day. Unfortunately, my dear brothers, people who know me know that I am a, a fire and brimstone preacher. I don't stroke people. I don't stroke people because people don't stroke me. <laughs> it's true, man. When they want to tell me that I'm doing something wrong, they tell me. They don't stroke me. So I must return the favor. <laughs> this morning, that God says Jesus is born in the manger. As Jesus is born in a place where nobody wants to be associated. Going from place to place and hearing the words, no one. This morning he stands at your heart and at my house. In Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and to her. And will dine with them. I am done. I am finished. What do you have? What do you cherish the most in your heart? You cherish your car? You cherish the house in which you stay? The job that you have? Oh, the job that you have. The respect that you don't get at home, you get at work. <laughs> the community in which you are staying? What is it that you have in your heart? Your bank account, beautiful. Everything that you have in your heart, you've worked for, you've obtained. But something that you have not obtained is the undivided love of God. And God wants you to make place in your heart so that He may enter and listen when he enters into your heart he will change your life when you open up and allow him to enter behold and stand at the door he will change your life and you will also say when I remember what the Lord has done, I'll never turn back anymore. That when He enters in your heart and He changes your heart, my loved ones in Christ, things will be different. You will see the world in a different way and understand the challenges that you have in a different way and navigate yourself through the storms of life in a different way. Seeing with Jesus in my boat, I can smile. Stop. All that you need to do is to say to him this morning, as you were saying in the Sundays, as you were singing when you did not understand the true meaning of this choir here or this chorus. Come in to my heart. Lord Jesus, come in to stay, come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his light shine perpetually over you. And may the Lord allow you to make this Christmas a different. I already said that I am not. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine amongst them. Let 
they will see your good works and glorify your Father while you pray. Let us be united in prayer, my love for Jesus. Lord, we can't quite imagine what it must have been like for many to hear God's request and to respond unconditionally with yes. We have a tendency to put conditions on everything, want to know what we have to do, how long this will take, what is it for, what are the projected outcomes, what do we gain? Forgive us for our faithlessness. Slow us down and force us to take time to really consider the wonderful way you have always worked in our lives. As we have to come before you with concern on our hearts for our family, friends and world, remind us that your presence is with us and your healing love comforts and restores us. Open our hearts and our ears to the cries of those who are in need. Let us use our talents and our resources to help others. Give us courage, O God, energy and enthusiasm as we work for you in this world. We come before you, Lord, knowing that on Christmas Day, Lord, it is the day that you were born. But that tracking nine months of God to the day that Mary received the message from the angel. And Mary sang that magnificent. You have lifted up the lowly, she says. You have pointed me out among many women. And so we realize, O oh God, that you are a God who do not turn your back on the lowly, on the meek, but you seek us out in order to restore us so that we may have life in abundance. We come before you, O oh God, and we pray now on this Christmas day for healing mercies for those who are broken spiritually. Those Heavenly Father who, who cannot pray anymore. Those who are God who, who are standing with their backs against the wall because of the trials and tribulations and the storms of this life. And we just pray, Lion of Judah, as you are born afresh this morning, that you would be born in every one of their hearts. That they would see the world in a, in a different way. They will break out of the pressing chains of depressions and disappointment and rejection. We pray for the Lord for the sick. We pray for the lost, those who know where their homes are, but who do not have courage to go back home. We pray for them. On Christmas Day. And we pray for us. Lord, for we pray for us. Those whom you have blessed abundantly, exceedingly more. Those who, who have family and, and friends and, 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 and today as they celebrate Christmas Day will be sitting at, at tables, Lord, God, filled to the broom more than enough. 
pray for the Lord God that they will not forget that they are their brothers and sisters keepers and to reach out their hand in love you are my brother, you are my sister let us pray each other bless now Lord God as we stand before you allow your Holy Spirit to rekindle, be rekindled within our hands so that we may change the world in your name we pray.